Hey everybody, so <clears throat> I wasn't planning to do another video tonight, but I was in the midst of my favorite pastime, which is of course refreshing the comments feeds on my YouTube channel to see if there's uh, new positive things said about me. And uh, one of my uh, one of my viewers pointed out that I was wrong about a couple of things with regards to the Horizon video game franchise. So I just wanted to drop in and uh, comment on those two things. One of them, I agree with you, I was incorrect. The other one, I disagree about. Uh, the person pointed out that, in fact, they had not made Alloy uh, fat or ugly in Horizon Zero Dawn, that it actually had to do more with, uh, her, I'm sorry, Horizon Forbidden West, <clears throat> that it actually had more to do with the fact that there was a uh, an earlier development engine from which that footage was taken, transposed onto newer, newer uh, video software that kind of, I, I'm not going to try to explain the technicality of it, but that made it appear to be something it was not. So uh, that was my short short-sightedness. I heard all of the brouhaha about uh, Alloy being fat, and I stopped listening, and I immediately just threw the whole project, or threw the whole game away, uh, or interest in the game away. Uh, and never looked into it further. I went and looked at the uh, release footage, high definition release footage of uh, Horizon Forbidden West, and you are right, she is consistent with uh, how she looked in the original game. So my apologies for that. I was wrong. I stand corrected. One thing I did want to disagree with you about, though, was your interpretation of the story that Ted saying that Ted Farrow was not the primary antagonist in Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, I can't I can't speak to what happens in Forbidden West, but I just wanted to quickly co quote from Horizon.fandom.com. Uh, you know, it talks about you can you can look up the Ted Farrow um, you can look up the Ted Farrow page on that. But I'll bring you to uh, the second graph under the second paragraph under success where he says it says. But with success came avarice and recklessness. Sobek, disapproving of Pharaoh's decision, quit and formed her own environmental robotics and technology company. Seeing her company as a rival to FAS environmental robotics division, Pharaoh harassed her with lawsuits. Furthermore, FAS habitually inflamed tensions between opposing buyers of SAS, FAS military technology in order to ensure maximum sales to both. Uh, going further down... Um, under the section, the uh, under the Pharaoh plague, it goes on to say, Pharaoh, with, after a longer explanation, Pharaoh's recklessness had therefore initiated the extermination of all life on earth, just as he had intended. The heart's timor swarm, like all chariot swarms, was unstoppable to all but those who it served. To all but, uh, it was, it was unstoppable to all but those it served. But though this swarm now served itself, a stricken pharaoh assured Sobek that he would support any measure she deemed necessary to contain the swarm. Knowing that containment was impossible, Sobek devised a plan that had an altogether different intended outcome. Instead of futile plans to stop the swarm, she devised a plan to restore life to the planet after its eradication by creating a fully automated global terraforming system that would eventually brute force and uh, broadcast would eventually brute force and broadcast the swarm's deactivation codes, restore the plants, uh, restore the planet's abilities to sustain life, and therefore life to the planet, including humans. She dubbed the project Zero Dawn. It goes on. Uh, you know, despite her earlier assurances, assurances Pharaoh was reluctant to approve it, but Sobek forced him to do so by threatening to let the world know that he was the cause of the coming apocalypse. She then took the proposal to General Aaron Harris. Uh, chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, and Pharaoh agreed to fund the entire project out of his vast personal fortune. So, it's kind of a, it, it goes on, um, it goes on from there. You can say that there is a redemption arc for Ted Farrow, but I don't think you can say, I don't think you can argue against the reality. What I said, uh, fundamentally, that it was this one character putting right what this char this other character, Ted Farrow, did. And I, I don't think fundamentally you can really deviate from that. Anyway, I or, or really argue against that. I do think that's what happened. Anyway, um, as far as the graphics thing, you're completely right about that, and I stand corrected.